Well, joining us now with more from today's hearing uh, with John Durham is Congressional Correspondent Kilmeny Ducard. Uh, good afternoon, Kilmeny. Busy day there on the Hill. Yeah. Yeah, John and Bianca, this has been uh, an incredible three hour hearing, which is now in recess, but we do expect members to return later for questioning. Those 40 members each have five minutes uh, again to have an exchange with John Durham. But I think Bianca made a great point here is there are two very different interpretations among Democrats and Republicans from this 300 page report. But Durham in his opening statement in his own words, called those findings sobering and in need of accountability, talking about how the FBI launched this investigation without speaking to any key witnesses about those allegations. And had they done that, they would have found these allegations to be baseless. As our report details, the FBI was uh, too willing to accept and use politically funded and uncorroborated uh, opposition research such as the Steele dossier. The FBI relied on the dossier and FISA applications knowing that it was uh, likely um, material originating from a political campaign, a political opponent. It did so even after the President of the United States, the FBI and CIA directors and others received briefings about intelligence suggesting that there was a Clinton campaign plan underway to stir up a scandal tying Trump to Russia. Durham adding that it's going to take time to restore public trust in these institutions. Republicans wanting to make reforms not only to the FBI, but also the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. The committee's Democratic chairman, or, or rather ranking member, Congressman Jerry Nadler, attacking the GOP's motive for this hearing and trying to debunk Durham's claims. Your investigation cost more than six and a half million dollars, involved the work of dozens of FBI employees and federal prosecutors, some of whom resigned in protest and took roughly four years to complete. Is that correct? No. And at one point, Democrats attacking his 40 year career as a prosecutor. You have a good reputation. You had a good reputation. That's why the two Democrats supported you. But the longer you hold on to Mr. Barr and this report that Mr. Barr gave you as special counsel, your reputation will be damaged. As everybody's reputation who gets involved with Donald Trump is damaged, he's damaged goods. There's no good dealing with him because you will end up on the bottom of a pyre. My uh, concern about my reputation is with uh, the people who I respect and my family and my Lord. And I'm Perfectly comfortable with my reputation with them, sir. Well said. God bless you. Um, the um... yeah, throughout this hearing, we have continued to hear Durham defending the findings of his report, saying if repeated and unaddressed, left unaddressed, this could lead to national security concerns. John Bianca. Yeah. Thanks, Kilmeny. Appreciate it. Joining us now to discuss this a bit closer is senior advisor to President Donald Trump, former President Jason Miller, and also alongside him, the former deputy assistant to President Trump, Sebastian Gorka, also the host of the Gorka Reality Check here, here on Newsmax, airing Sunday nights at 7 and 10 p.m. Great to see you both. I know you're watching this very closely, as were we. Um, interesting, there were some moments of levity, you know, even though it's all very serious. So it's interesting to see John Durham when they're like, welcome to Congress, uh, because we all have been, you know, reading his 300-page report. Um, but now it really comes to the questioning and what will, if any, reforms be happening. Let's play one extra soundbite here that uh, we haven't heard yet to kind of drill in on some of today's key moments. Another aspect of our findings concern the FBI's failure to sufficiently scrutinize information it received or to apply the same standards to allegations it received about the Clinton and Trump campaigns. As our report details, the FBI was uh, too willing to accept and use politically funded and uncorroborated uh, opposition research such as the Steele dossier. So there you have it, uh, the FBI's yeah. failure, which even Ray said after learning about the collusion, that they've made reforms. Obviously, there's much more if you ask the GOP. Sebastian, uh, first to you, uh, do you think that there will be some significant uh, you know, fallout after we have this testimony today in public? Are you optimistic? 
No, I'm not optimistic because you can't reform the DOJ and the FBI as long as we don't control the executive, meaning conservatives and patriots who want to see a justice system that has no tears, where Lady Justice is blind. If you have somebody like Newt Gingrich, one of the smartest men in America, who's no bomb thrower, say recently on my White House colleague uh, Steve Bannon's podcast that the FBI must be dismantled. Uh, I'm sorry, there, there is no salvaging this organization, but I must say something about Special Counsel Durham. I find it a little absurd, I find it insulting that he gives testimony under oath today saying, the FBI, uh, they shouldn't have done Russia collusion without talking to key witnesses and verifying the Steele dossier. Well, why didn't you do that either? John Durham spent four years and he didn't even subpoena or interview James Comey or Andrew McCabe, the key people behind this, Lisa Page. Uh, this is a hack job. John, you know, John Durham can quote my Lord and my God all he wants, but he's really a coward. Mm. Well, yeah, and, you know, Sebastian, look, there's, there's, there's still questions about, including among those who he interviewed, if they're still even working at the DOJ and, and, and the FBI. Jason, I want to get your thoughts um, on not only what Sebastian was just talking about, but also Jerry Nadler. Look, you know, this is kind of straight out of the Dems playbook. Of course, they're going to go after Durham. Nadler said, uh, your report reads like a defense of the Trump campaign because that's exactly what it is. Uh, you're in very close contact with former President Trump. What's the feeling? I'm assuming he's watching this. Uh, what's the feeling from the campaign um, uh, among yourself, his advisors, and the former president today? Well, I found Jerry Nadler's comments pretty rich, considering that he's the LeBron James of lying and obstructing <laughs> and doing everything he can to use government powers to go and manipulate a political environment. You know, there was one thing that didn't really get discussed today uh, nearly as much as it should have, and that's the opportunity cost that was blown in the first two, two and a half years of President Trump's first term. Uh, with all the distraction and things they had to do worrying about the Mueller investigation, the fake Mueller investigation, but also what about the human cost? What about the lives that were ruined? Think about Roger Stone, Michael Flynn, George Papadopoulos, even Carter Page, people who had to spend tens of millions of dollars who had their lives turned upside down without even an apology. And to hear Durham say, for, and, and again, I agree with Seb that he was pretty weak, but to hear Durham say that there is blatant FBI bias, that they trampled over bureau procedural norms to, in an effort to go and try to get Trump, I thought was just absolutely disgusting. And we'll see what happens with the uh, reform, if any, uh, on the FISA warrant, as you allude to, you know, Carter Page and the complete abuse there. So excellent uh, insight from you both on that. Obviously, the other story we want to get to is is Hunter Biden as well, that plea deal. Yeah, that's right. So Hunter, uh, so Biden's lawyer, Chris Clark, was on, unsurprisingly, right, MSNBC, and was asked about the critics who say the DOJ gave him uh, what's being referred to as a sweetheart deal. Listen to what he said, and then I want to get your thoughts after. Look, there, there are documents that haven't been publicly released yet. I think people have reported what the product prosecutors are asking for. I think you have to wait till the court proceeding happens to know. But, you know, I think the judge is going to do what's fair. And I think what's fair is, you know, my client gets on with his life. Sebastian, is it fair that Hunter Biden get on with his life? What do you think? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> you know, ask the rapper who got four years in prison for doing the same thing that Hunter Biden did on that federal background check. Ask, ask Wesley Snipes who had to go to prison because, I mean, seriously, I mean, are we even discussing this? He forgets to pay $1.2 million worth of tax in 2018. And then five years later, he gets a slap on the wrist. If anybody watching this show, anybody watching this show had lied, on a federal background check to purchase a handgun or forgotten to pay a million dollars worth of taxes, they'd be in prison.
Yeah, they want to know uh, our bank records if it's $600 plus here, the yeah. IRS here for small business owners. So uh, we, we know the two tiers when it comes to that for sure. Also, Jason, you know, we do want to emphasize to the GOP, James Conner saying they're still going to be, you know, pressing forward. In fact, Comer is saying he wants to uh, speak with U.S. Attorney David Weiss, of course, who, you know, was part of this plea deal. Comer is telling Axios he actually wants a closed door hearing because there's a big question here. You had the attorney saying, I understand this is resolved, uh, but right there, as you put up Weiss's statement, this is an ongoing investigation. Are you concerned that they're trying to use that ongoing investigation to possibly block subpoena power when it comes to the Biden family business dealings? <laughs> Well, they're going to do everything they can to block any real investigation. But guys, I want to make sure we're not missing the main point here. That's the fact that foreign governments, i.e. China, foreign state-owned enterprises, including China and others, paid the son of the president of the United States back when he was vice president to influence official actions. Think about that. Foreign governments were running an op on Hunter Biden. This isn't about Hunter Biden missing a deadline or forgetting to put a stamp on his tax return or some other nonsense. This is the fact that we have foreign corruption going on right now with the current president of the United States, and they want to just sweep it under the rug and say, hey, Hunter, enter a diversionary program and just, you know, promise not to uh, collude with foreign governments anymore. I think it's disgraceful. Well, to that point, I think there's concern that this is distracting from the point that you're making, Jason. So. You know, on it goes. We'll see. All right, guys. Listen, uh, really good to have you both in. Uh, Sebastian Gorka, we'll be checking you out on the Gorka Reality Check. And Jason Miller, good to see you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, guys.